We are live in the distortion paint room. Okay, so we've got both paint rooms going. Right now we're in paint room number one with Tom. <laughs> He's got his mask on like he should. He's spraying rub out on to a hodgepodge run, a mixed run. So we have some death risings here. Um, mixed runs are hard because, you know, there's different colors, different items. There we've got Barb. Yeah, Tom said they would paint a hundred of the same thing if they had their choice, but here we have Bob's. So see, he's painting rub out on the face. We'll come back in and see it being rubbed out here shortly. And there, now we're gonna go, this is the first day that we have paint room number two going. And we have Ed in paint room number two. He says, hello, he's facing Scarewolf Legends and Scarewolf Animatronics. Now see, I don't have a mask on. I don't have a mask on. I should have had one on, but I'm just going to venture in here a little bit and then I'm going to go back. Okay, now I'm going to go over back to Tom because the rub out's not so bad. It's just kind of an alcohol base. Yes, werewolf babies. So I know some of you rec recognize these guys here. You have some of these. Anybody, anybody know what this one is? We got a bunch of them. Hey, Kurt. Thanks for watching. Thanks for checking in. Yes, bound corpse it is. Okay, we're going to come back here in a second, but I'm going to check out what's going on in Mike's area. So Mike and uh, Mike's off today. But we have a T-Rex animatronic in Mike's area, all ready to go. Heavy duty armature here. You can see some of the behind the scenes inside. And we also have, which is fun, a sleeping giant. Colossus's cousin. So Sleeping Giant came before Colossus. I know Brick has a Colossus and he's watching, but here we have a Sleeping Giant. Still needs dressed. Has some nice hair on, already done. Punched hair. As you can see, it's punched. Punched in there. And uh, trimmed. The mustache has been trimmed. Eyebrows have been trimmed. Still needs dress, but we got the belly, got the hands, got the elbows with the cylinder. And then back here, we got the big, big cylinder. Hello to everyone watching in Belgium. <laughs> That's awesome. 
So we had a great Trans World Halloween show. We got to see a lot of you while we were out there, which was wonderful. Now things, now we're sort of in production mode now. Got alien parasites here, still need to be painted. Um, we've got mothers. Just getting finished up. We've got Grumpy Gargoyle and his friend Bobo. Bobo needs to be trimmed. <laughs> That's going to be a difficult trim around the ears. Luckily, we got. So now we're going to go back in the paint rooms here in a while and we'll be able to talk to Ed and everything once he's done basing. Here we have Lorena. <laughs> oh, look. We've got a little strange paint sample, a more purplish version. It appears of Banshee with some strange eyes. So you can see, now this, this happened right before the Trans World show, but this is interesting. Neither of those eyes really ended up being the eyes, but you can see they were testing different colors. Um, hopefully you saw the last video we posted on the alien spider, the paint paint test and paint contest they did um and which one hey Jaden, the haunter banshee okay we're going next door into shipping got some stuff ready to ship already boxed up now this is cool janine and lorena just finished um putting clothes on this zombie photo op. You know, if I can find a couple people to put their heads in there, we could get a good photo. But what's cool about this is the event, Ghost Golf sent a custom shirt. So one of the victims has got that custom shirt on, Ghost Golf. So the zombie photo photo op has three different aliens clutching and grabbing we've got an old dusty cut up behind okay so let's go into the trimming area see what we have trimmed so this is the area where things are trimmed and prepared for paint. So you can see we have scarecrow wraths. I know some of you got some scarecrow wraths. We've got some heads, but we need some bodies. We've got some crows all trimmed and ready. So see they're preparing all these for paint. So it looks like we'll have a Scarecrow Wrath paint run here soon. We've got some Alice Cooper heads. That's kind of a creepy scene. So we've got some Alice Cooper severed heads in prep. Got some pumpkin stalker heads. Now, Lorena likes to keep her area organized. She's probably one of the more organized as far as spatial organization here at Distortions, <laughs> which is good. Look, all the legs. We got alien spider legs, and you can see the difference. Very similar, but these are pumpkin 
the uh, Jack Widow legs right here. Then we've got alien spider legs right here. Got a Roswell alien. It's in the process of being seamed. So see, it still needs to be smoothed out and put another layer on. Got some bodies here. We have lots, lots ready to go into paint. So it's good we have the two paint rooms up going now. So this is cool. Got a collection of spider bodies here so you can see the difference of Jack Widows versus alien spiders. Very similar in size. But we got a whole bunch of those ready to go. Haunted Ghoul. That's awesome. Your alien spider just came in. Here we have a Yeti that's in the process of being haired. So see all of this, Tom is punching the hair on this. Looks pretty cool. It's got the shaved head Yeti. So see all of this needs to be punched. And it's back. So if we're still live, we may have Tom punch some of that hair so you can see how it's done. And here we have a pile of bodies. So here are the scarecrow wrath bodies, pumpkin stalker bodies. Yes, the Yeti. <laughs> and we got a little purple people eater. It's not purple. Okay, so we're going to head next door back to paint again and see what stage they're at. It's Janine. <laughs> Evolved Trooper, let's go see what Ed's doing. We're entering the other side of the paint room. It looked very paint fume in there. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold my breath. So these mixed runs are a little extra challenging, right? Because of, I mean, you have to, you have different colors of rub out you need to do. And, yeah, and I mean, this one even, it's not terrible. There's only three colors of rub out. But uh, the one that we're going to do is really what slows us down is when things require different stuff. Uh, like, for example, Death Rising gets poked. But then Bob and Barb get wigs, so we have to set up wigs and stuff to set up the stuff to, um, to, to poke the hair. And then, you know, Bob's going to get uh, a shirt and an overcoat, but then Death Rising is only going to get a shirt. And then we have to come over here and deal with wet hair for the bound ports. 
uh, and then, you know, distress costumes for night fright. And so, you know, when it's a hundred or something, but it's the same steps just a hundred times, you kind of just shut off your brain and do it until it's done. Um, the hodgepodge is, even if they're not much more physically tasking, they're more mentally tasking and require a lot more prep work. So you have to really be thinking as you're going about what the the next best move is. Ed always uses a, a pool player analogy. The He says, you know, the best pool players are setting up their next shot while they're taking their current one. And, and so there's a lot of that, uh, a lot of, Hefty time management in a hodgepodge <laughs> run. And you could easily forget a step more easily. Oh right? my gosh, yeah. For a yeah. few. <laughs> well, when but, it, we'll think, oh my gosh, we're so close to getting done. But then, you know, everything has like two to five finishing steps after the paint job is finished. And when they're not the same steps, it's uh, yeah. you're bouncing here and you're bouncing there and you're bouncing here. And so. Now, people saw the. Uh, alien spider contest. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Were you happy with the result? I was. Of course, you do. You already do. <laughs> you know, it was kind of like a like a glass cannon thing. My my blue spider and my red spider were like not hated, but just not liked. <laughs> you know, um, but the white spider seemed to be really popular. So I don't know. It's kind of I was pouring everything into that white spider, and I'm glad it worked out because the red and the blue were were kind of big failures but sometimes you have to see it in physical form because yeah. Yeah. you had you had done some mock-ups yeah. but and like to see, okay on yeah the computer, but then just seeing it in person the color schemes didn't quite work out um, but I, I i loved the white spider i was really excited about that i was excited to kind of play around with like an albino color palette um and uh, I was really happy to see that that was one one. But, you know, ultimately, like, uh, Scarecrow Wrath, uh, my paint job for the head, but Ed's paint job for the body won. And it ended up being a great thing because his body just ultimately looks uh, better for the yeah, piece. Yeah. So as long as the best paint job wins, everybody wins. Right. You know, egos <laughs> out of the out of the picture. So Nice. We have Canon from House of Doom says, hello, Tom, you did an amazing job on Scarecrow Wrath. I can't wait to unbox it. Oh, awesome. Thank you very much. Yeah, <laughs> we're, we got Scarecrow Wraths in our future. Yeah, he goes out of the question when you're losing. That's right. I mean, <laughs> when, when you're losing, it's a big deal. No, I was just talking about how I lost. Did you? What'd you lose on? Scarecrow Wrath's body. That was your paint job. It was, it was mostly your idea. <laughs> but... You know, when I started this thing, I just want to make a, full, a few cool monster masks. And now it's just a colossal bunch of work. Yeah. <laughs> you know, two production papers. Yeah. So, it's it's work, cool. huh? so you think this is going to be efficient and good? By far. You know, when you become an adult, you start liking kind of dumb things. Like, oh, look, my new cutlery. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Like my, a kid would be like, oh, that sucks, you know, but yeah, you, you, your, your taste change. Like, we're both very excited about the new paper. Nice. But even as exciting as the new paint room, which is going to sound ridiculous, is these lights. Yes. These lights on the sides of the rooms are brand new. And I mean, I don't know about you, it's making my life a million oh, times easier. It's unbelievable. Mike and Zach put these things up in like, Four hours in both paint rooms and in the hall there, and uh, oh, it's just—it's so much brighter. You can see the yeah. see yeah. everything yeah. clearly. Yeah. Oh well, this one's not even on because I'm using the plug. Uh, yeah. All, all on. So okay, my camera may yeah. adjust. I don't know if it'll fully show. Well, you know what would be great to be to come over here. Uh huh. Behind here. Oh, so yeah. Things really shine. Now, see, you can because see the detail. It used to be like this. We can see. Oh, yeah. When we were see, look. Back here. Now, that's how it used. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, it's like a that's dungeon. how it used to be. That's crazy. Yeah, this is, this is how we used to do our paint jobs up until like two weeks ago. Wow. So, and now let's turn them on again. Yeah, yeah, I will, look at this. Tell you what, 
it's made us work harder because you really oh I was missing spots. The yeah, no, no, was, no. <laughs> it's easier to see the flaws. Yeah, yeah, so <laughs> you know the customers benefit at our doom. That's the wrong plug. That's wow, the okay. Nice. Um, okay, well. Ed, do you want me to go finish the hair up again before I put this stuff out? At least. Oh, you both can. Oh, I gotta get my new poker. Okay, so we're gonna head back over to the Yeti. Tom's gonna give us a lesson in hair punching. He's gonna he's gonna show us the art of hair punching. Luke's Garage Reviews, Mini Mean. <laughs> so are you, you counting items? Taking inventory of our raw items. Oh, okay. So she's taking inventory, see how many raw items, which that will help them plan the paint runs and the orders. Looks like we have a pile of barbs, barbs, death risings, zombies. So you have a new punching tool, huh, Tom? Yes. Um, so what I've started doing, especially these Yetis are the worst. They always break my punching needles. Um, so I, I've got quite a few hair punching tools here. And I try to make sure that as soon as one breaks, I go and fix it so that when the next one breaks, I'm not waiting for the last one to dry still. Um, but this one has been super nice. It's got uh, two hair poking needles in it. Um, and, and this you is, made it out of this? Yeah, this was just like some sort of sewing all handle or something like that. And I, I drill into it and epoxy these uh, these sewing needles that have been cut down into it. Um, and even on this one, uh, this works really well when it works and works okay when it doesn't. Uh, I, I actually temper the needles sometimes because they're, they're hardened steel, which is great, but snaps easily sometimes. And so I, just like a little bit of heat, like can give it a little more spring it doesn't always work when it works it extends the life of it you know good enough for me and then when it doesn't well like i said the the yeti breaks them anyways um but so he's he's getting there it's uh, a lot of hair let's see the entire second half of my day yesterday after lunch was poking hair because we had this guy and we had the sleeping giant who got fully poked hair and then um, the giant zombie hand which is also poked hair so this is going over and spraying that rub out on was a nice break <laughs> And you have to watch your hands a little bit not to poke yourselves, but it's it's not too bad, is it really? No, I mean, as long as you're grabbing the hair, you know, relatively far away from where you're going to be poking it, it turns out all right. I've, I think, only stabbed myself once doing this, and I've been doing almost all of the hair poking here for like, I don't know, maybe three, four years now. Oz Crate say, says very tedious. Yeah. Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> House of Doom says lots of hair. Lots of hair. <laughs> um, the, the Yeti also used to be a combination of poke hair and national fiber technology um, hair to, to kind of fill out the bulk. 
but um, you know, the national fiber on top of being expensive, it's hard to get it to kind of match the look of the poked hair. Um, and you know, it really ultimately doesn't save us too much time doing it that way. So we've uh, started doing fully poked yetis because it doesn't change the amount of time that goes into it too much. And I know they a little more, a little more consistent, but nice. he's, he's a lot of work. So basically you put it right there, you punch it, yeah. you punch it a few times, then you pull it away and it, yep. it stays. And you just kind of go up line by line by line, line by, by line. line. It's almost like a printer kind of. So and, it goes over each other and mm -hmm. kind of all fills. Yep. I mean, this looks super full. Is that yeah. what you're trying to get on the head? Or yeah, less? yeah. So the, the head's going to be pretty full up to, you know, kind of right here. And then um, I'll, I'll try to make it a little sparser. And then he's got a full beard. I think he might have eyebrows too. I, I forget if he's got eyebrows or not. Um, yeah, he's it's a lot of work, but he looks cool. <laughs> Does savage? Okay. Um, the the tool it it's uh these are sewing needles uh, that the eyelet has been cut in half, and so they they grab hair and then, you know, stab into the latex and then the latex grips onto it. And it's a lot of fun. Evolved Trooper says, I remember doing hair punching. I poked my finger badly. Oh yeah. It, it, you you, you got to be mindful of it. And uh, then J and J ranch asks for this one. Why can't it be glued the hair? Um, well, it certainly could. Um, we like our hair, uh, you know, with like silicone, um, it is uh, really dense and we can't get as much like kind of variety. Like you can see, you know, kind of in these sections, it's fairly sparse and then it goes thick here. And in the past, we've tried, you know, doing laid hair where it's thick and dense. Um, but the silicone caulking that we use to, to lay the hair um, even when it cures is like kind of slippery. Um, and so when you're trying to like poke the hairline on something that's used silicone to glue it down, it doesn't grab the, the individual fibers as well. So, yeah, so this and, is, I mean, you can see here, it's a little yeah. more sparse. You can see his lat lats, but here it's thick and that would be hard to do right with light, like gluing hair. Yeah, and, uh, and there is you know the, the gluing if you can believe it really isn't any faster than doing it this way especially you know now that we've started using this little double needle thing for when you know it's kind of just like filling big areas like this um, it looks a little better and doesn't take more time so yeah that's the way we do it now Good. Well, thank you. Absolutely. You might come be back to check check it out. We'll see how far I can get. <laughs> yeah. So. Do we have any billy bites? I'll ask next time Lorraine is free if we have any billy bites that are unpainted. Nice. Here we have the shipment is going out. What do you got there, Ed? <laughs> so he is, you finished up in paint room number two. Oh, he's got a ways to go. You might grab him and have him come help this. Have some more action. Does anybody know what this one's called? So it needs to be rubbed out still. 
That is Night Fright. Ooh, and here we have Scary Carries. Oh, wait, Ed, wait, wait. Let's, wa let's watch the action, okay. So now, so the first step, of course, is to put on the rub out, which is 70% rubbing alcohol and inks. And then you, um, it breaks down the ink and it, and it leaves it in all the cracks, which is the way it would be kind of. So you see that detail in the eye. We had just filmed that was all black with the rub out on it and now rubbed out quite a lot of it. And, but there's still some detail. And here's a little trick I do. It's a lot of these get speckled, but to start with, I'll rub it out. And then just, there's a little bit of color left on the sponge. And that just gives her a little bit of texture. It's, it's pretty simple stuff. I mean, this is, this is monster making 101, but it's used the same. Some of the same techniques we use are used in miniature miniatures, which a lot of people have done little dungeons and dragons miniatures, but dry brush and rub out stuff like that. But it's, it's very fast and it's really good. But let me tell you, it makes a, a big bunch of smoke when you're spraying a room full of zombies. <laughs> She's not really bad. She was just sculpted that way. <laughs> That's from Roger Rabbit, by the way. Now, did you have a good Trans World Halloween show? It was fun, fun oh, seeing everybody. It, it was. was. It was. It was. I don't know. It's just amazing to me. It's such a, the show has grown into such a great, I mean, product's great, obviously, nowadays, but the people are so great. The, the combination of home haunters and pro haunters and just people that buy stuff for their, their self, you know, just to have. And I don't know, it's just really a good energy. And uh, Jen and Rich are kind of, Hot, Hot Channel says Transworld was great. I'm so glad I was able to go in. I talked to Ed a lot there. Yay! It was good seeing you there. Wasn't it awesome? Thanks, Crazy Hunter Life. It says I love you, Ed. Aw, uh, and I love you. Then we've got Canon from House of Doom. Looks like you guys had a pretty great trans world judging by how busy you are right now. Oh, yes. Well, <laughs> this is actually, I don't even think we've started to tackle the trans world stuff. This is stuff we had since. These, uh, these are like February orders right yeah. now, pre trans world. Yeah. Kurt says, I've done a rub out on a prop pretty easy thanks to Monster Lab. Oh. Thank you. You know, I keep saying this, but we're planning on doing more Monster Labs. In fact, I really want to get Mike in showing how to do the control systems and the air cylinders and 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 all that kind of stuff. Because, boy, as you get more and more into it, you start wanting to make your own stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah, it's not the way I want it. Nocturnal Ned says, hey, Ed, I used to work with the folks at Creature Revenge. Sure do miss being in the industry. Awesome. Why aren't you in the industry? <laughs> Cornhub Logan says, do you all have any shake and bake electric chairs on order? I'm sure they want, want us to, they want to see a behind the scenes of shake and bake. You know, that would be fun. Um, we, I don't know that we do. Um, Yeah, you know, we do have the original, the one that changed us and the whole industry sitting back there over where Tom's poking hair. We'll go, Maybe I'll we'll show get Tom to help me, and I'll show it to you. Because that that's be like, 
guy called and he says, I've got the original electric chair you took to the Transvolt show in 96 or something. I said, oh, you got one of those? And he goes, no, I have the one you took to the show. I bought it off the show floor. And I'm like, mm, I didn't believe him exactly. <laughs> and he said pictures. And I knew the way we made that. And it's, it's the original. And, you know, it was so funny because we're just, we're just making a living. And we make this thing for Dark Museum, which was this attraction we're doing. And I thought, it's like it was the most expensive thing ever at the trade show. I thought, well, if we're lucky, we'll sell six. And we sold over 200 the first year. Oh, hey, Tom, where seen. in the world are you going? I'm going to the little boys' room. <laughs> it's a little boys' room, and then meet me back there because I'm rubbing out. All right. And I'm lonely for you because it's a lot of work. <laughs> well, you know, the other thing. <laughs> That's right. Lorena. She puts up with us. She's she's so much more responsible than the rest of us. Right? Yeah. Look here. She's got a clipboard. She's making notes. We're over there. I mentioned that. Hamburger Hospital says optional Raptor Rock is the breast prop of the year. <laughs> what was that name the, again? The hamburger. No, Hamburger Hospital is the <laughs> channel name. That's a great name. It's so weird. Hamburger Hospital. I can't even imagine what they do. This poor thing, we just, we brought it in. So this is the original electric chair, it. apparently. This is it. And it's, it's, it's rough. Oh, shoot, I don't know if we can get you back there, Adam. It's rough, but it's, well, we can, it's, this is it. If this is, this is it. Oh, look, your little friend's in here, Adam. Oh, nice. That's, this is the Raptor that went to the trade show. Yep, that's right. That's we bad. had to bring him back because the other one's tail rubbed his paint off, so we had to fix him. There it, it is. That changed, well, our world, <laughs> not the world, <laughs> but it certainly changed the industry. The hunt industry. This is the original electric chair. Yeah, it's really rough. His chin's all eaten away. We need to from cover shaking. it up with the I plastic. Know. But we need to do a lot of things, Adam. We just, <laughs> we're so busy. We're just we're crazy. That should be in a museum. But yeah, it in fact it's got like foam in the legs. That's before we put uh, put you know the whole uh -huh. leg in. I don't know. And it's run by a giant motor. We can't get back there to see a giant motor with a pulley and a gear reducer. And you know, it was just we were just going about our business. And then <laughs> really, it did. It 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 took haunted houses from black plastic, mass from the dime store. That's an old term we used to say, <laughs> and turned it into multi-million-dollar productions like Netherworld. Animatronics. And and yeah. Evolve yeah. Trooper gave us a a uh, super thanks. Yay! Which, uh, Thank you. <laughs> I really appreciate that. Here's Doctor Quantum. Oh shoot! Oh. What happened? Almost tripped over there. There's Dr. Quantum all wrapped up. Yeah, yeah. Now this thing, even people that spent like a half hour talking to Todd don't quite get what this is. <laughs> and so we're gonna we're gonna do an unboxing video. Todd's coming back out from Microsoft. Oops, I'm not supposed to say that. Anyway, he's coming back out, and um, so we're gonna we're gonna um, make a few changes based on the stuff that's shown, and then we'll do a really good unboxing. Evolved Trooper says, after midnight is their favorite prop. You're my hero, Ed. Oh, <laughs> that's so nice. He's chosen poorly, though. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's, like, heroes that, like, save lives, like paramedics and stuff. All we do is rubber monsters. So, Okay, you know. so you guys are going to go rub out. I'll, yeah, yeah. I'll be there one second. I have a question for Lorena. Oh. Are there any billy bites back here that are trimmed? Yes, there are. There are billy bites. Yes. This is all right. Uh, Some, yeah, the ones we boxed are already gone. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Someone, someone was wanting to see, was asking to see a billy bite. A raw billy bite. So this is a raw billy bite. Still needs to go into paint. Needs to be dressed. Mm-hmm. And there's a bunch of them there, or a few. I have, yeah, I have like six. But six billy bites there. Okay. <laughs> Oh, 
Good, thank you. <laughs> you knew where everything is. Okay, so now we're gonna go see the team of Tom and Ed rub out faster. Hey, Berlina Davis from Alabama. Thank you so much. I'm trying to keep up with these comments. I'll definitely be reviewing them after. I'm just reading them as fast as I can <laughs> as I walk. Do we have any saucerman trim? That I don't know. Here's something. A little painted Bobo. Bobo's the friend of not only Sleeping Giant, but Grumpy Gargoyle. Here we have Jet Alien, sculpted by Jordu. It was fun seeing Jordu at the Trans World Show, too. And before. Here's the mold. You see the back mold. It's a fiberglass mold for this one. That's a fiberglass mold of the back for uh, Jet Alien. John C. I don't know what the highest number selling prop is ever. Last year, I can say last year in terms of just numbers, because, you know, there's some props are more expensive than others. But like as far as numbers of props last year, Pumpkin Witch was the number one prop for 2023. But honestly, then the year before that, Mutant, which is a, was a more expensive, you know, animatronic prop, was probably the number one for the year before for 2022. So now it's always nice to have two or more people. Now, normally you have, you bring, if it's not a Friday, you'll bring mondo's crew or different people in here and you'll have a huge team in here rubbing out oh yeah see that's a sad day because for paint they have fridays off they work long days monday through thursday and unless it's crazy heat of the season they enjoy having the three-day weekend but they are not here today so we don't have it's the just... advantage of them coming <laughs> in this yeah yeah we can still do it though, right, Tom? Yeah, once upon a time, <laughs> it was mostly you would be doing the rub outs. Oh, yeah. And now you've learned to delegate a little. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, we, uh, we paint, up, right? yeah, we, we paint more monsters than we did back then. Uh, but no, I mean, it's, it's all right. It's, you kind of come in on Friday anticipating that the rub out's going to take longer than. 10 minutes because there's not three to four extra people helping. It's always fun to see the detail emerge when you kind of. Oh, yeah. Well, it goes from kind of a let's see red mess to suddenly it, it's almost there. It's almost painted. Mondo and his crew do a good job up here. Yeah. Now, normally, if you were in here and we weren't filming a video, you'd be listening to music. Yes. <laughs> There'd be music going, but because, you know, you want to be able to hear me and everything. Monsters and music go together like peanut butter <laughs> and jelly. That's right. Monsters and music. Yeah, yeah. Man, it can get pretty loud in here. <laughs> Jade and the Hunter, what kind of music? Well, it varies greatly. Tom and Bradloff, a few of your names. Yes. Nice names. There's Kid. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I like quite a variety of stuff. 
Um, I listen from everything from like the Jonas Brothers to cattle decapitation and everything. <laughs> I, now you, I, but you play guitar too, and you you sometimes work on making guitars. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I in my free time experiment with uh, guitar building and customization and stuff, and I play a little guitar for for those of you that'll be at Monster Day this year. You'll get to see if I can play guitar wearing a Scarewolf costume. <laughs> Okay. I did it as Frankenstein last year. It turned out. It turned out right. Yeah, that was fun. We have hi from Scotland. Woo, Scotland. I've never even visited Scotland. Now, Hello. This technique I learned from you guys and use it making we models can't thank you enough. So they make oh, models, so but awesome. they use this. Oh, yeah. Mentors? Um, yeah, either that or some type of resin model. Are you talking about miniatures or resin models? Amanda Fletcher in Scotland. Nice. And what kind of music do you listen to? Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> pretty big variety. Anywhere from um, death metal to <laughs> crypt metal. No. He it's, does I, it. I, I, no, I do. I, mean, I, I like skinny puppy and some of that stuff. That's old, crazy music ministry and things. But um, I like the Beatles. I like. Oh. Now, that was interesting in the Alien Spider video that you you uh, remembered that purple and green which you used yeah. on one of the spiders was actually a child or a teenage a, a teenage memory from an alice cooper concert yeah that was i was mesmerized you know i'm a kid growing up on on, on in the country and and my my grandfather had a, a 40 acre farm and raised horses and stuff and so Here's this kid, and man, when I got exposed to music, it blew my mind. I'd never heard anything like this. And of course, that was like, my first rock song was, uh, she was just 17 by the Beatles. My uncle had a 45, most of you don't know what that is probably, but a 45 record. And I, and I heard it and it blew my mind. And then things like Outer Limits came on and Planet of the Apes movies and stuff, and that blew my mind completely. And so they've always kind of been merged. I mean, monsters and music are kind of a, a big thing here. And I I like some, you know, slower, beautiful stuff, but I like, there's a lot of modern stuff I listen to too. I think I'm more more hip and modern, modern than Tom sometimes. He's listening <laughs> to Metallica. Well, I don't know what all those, those uh, long hair bands Come are. Come on, the competition's over now. <laughs> <laughs> I was. Uh, I, but it, yeah, music, music and monsters. At, at the time, in 1972, when I first saw that concert, uh, Alice Cooper's the only guy merging the two, and and had a really amazing stage show. And um, and I went and saw the first one in Chicago. The second one I saw, we had moved to Colorado, and I went up to Denver, the Denver Coliseum, and. Holy cow! Did he, that blew my mind. And so, yeah, I've always, uh, I've always loved both, and it, <laughs> it helps because this is a lot of work. I don't know if you realize that, but it's a lot of work. So, if you got music going, somehow, it helps you get through the day. Nice. We have Beer Station. Hello from Canada. Beer Station. That's a cool name. Which part of Canada are you from? Beer Station. Okay. So everybody. These are kind of interesting. Just going to get it, take a break out from paint for a second. Um, these are the, the armatures. Can anybody guess? We got four. These are the armatures for the spider legs. So that's cool. Do we sell unpainted poles? No, we don't. We only sell painted poles generally. Any 
any more plans to make any more of those giant bone piles that I'm not sure. I don't know if we, we're going to, if those are going to be available this year or when or if, but I'll check on that for next time. Okay. We have a contest here. Okay, what? So rip this guy out. Okay. And then first one to figure out who the sculpture is wins, but it's a very distinctive sculptor that. So uh, the figure out who sculpted death this, rising. Oh this yeah. One? This one right here. So who sculpted the first first person the very distinctive look? Which of our sculptors from over the years sculpted Death Rising? We may have to give clues. Come on, this, contest. Isn't this beautiful? Okay, we don't even have any guesses yet. Oh my goodness. Come on, throw some. We have a guess. We no, no. We we've got Jordu, Jordu. We no, got no. two Jordus. That's so. No, not no Jordu. It's not Jordu. So let him let him wait. This sculptor is very friendly. Oh wait, jacked up builds Mikey. Yay! You win. It is. It's Mikey. Yay. Mikey Rotella and sculpted since you this. Win, uh, Tom's gonna dance a little jig. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good. Rob someone of their prize, but I don't want to injure myself. <laughs> yeah. Mikey Rotella sculpted Death Rising. Yeah. That's a good contest. You know, Mikey sculpted. is known for teeth out in Hollywood, which is very interesting. He's just a pro. I mean, he's good at everything. Don't get me wrong, but he's kind of known. For Keith, and this is one of his yeah. early set of chomps. That's right. These are some of his early. He actually did a monster lab on Keith. Yes. With the with that little little gremlin guy. Okay. Oh, so we have David Felchak asking, "Will you ever start making masks again?" Well, we still make masks. We do. Not as much. You know, the sad thing is, that's what started the company, of course. But the sad thing is, um, they started getting done overseas. Pretty darn good quality and for very, very cheap. So it became literally impossible to compete with overseas. In fact, what we did was we spent, this was back in 89. We spent over $100,000 putting in uh, a conveyor system to move the mass through paint stations because we were trying to stay in the business. We wanted to keep making mass. And, and it, we had um, that first year, 89, uh, which was perfect timing, Batman hit the movie with Jack Nicholson. And we made with this conveyor system and with 75 employees, we were making a Batman cowl. I've got the video to prove it every three and a half seconds. And we sold over a hundred thousand Batman pieces in 14 weeks, which to, it still blows me away to this day, but that's what we did trying to stay in the business. Now, and still we could remember the, um, we recently did monster of the month, which was a mask based, uh, yes. Project Monster of the Month Club. Yeah. And there was we did quite a few, and those were all limited edition masks. Yeah, which those were cool. limited to the number of subscribers. That was really fun, and we've talked about bringing that back, but I don't know. We're so busy. It was it was a lot of work, but it was really cool, and um, we we talked about bringing back some version of it, like maybe a six piece uh one year subscription or something i don't know but um i don't know how many people know about it but it was a, it was kind of eric austin from mass fest said it was the biggest thing in the mask industry at the time so that was kind of cool ed are you guys going to midsummer scream no we're not going to midsummer scream no we're going there's a couple coming up we're going to midwest and we're going to um uh, East, Coast, East Coast, East yeah. Coast Transworld. So there, Marsh and Ed will be at East Coast Transworld. 
uh, and Midwest Haunters, and Mask Fest. Oh yeah, Mask Fest. Never miss that. So that's a that's another love fest. I mean, everybody's so passionate and fun. It's just a really fun show to go to. It's in conjunction with Horror Hound. Nice. Well, I think I think we've about about done it here. Well, yeah. There's, you know, it's really not that much going on because it's Friday. But you know, <laughs> it's a little calmer, and uh, and the music would be much louder <laughs> if because then Mike's they, not here. You know, Mike likes country western. And we're, then they can turn up the music when. Yeah, uh, yeah, say. that's right. So this is Barb. I can't remember who sculpted Barb. I did. Oh, Ed sculpted Barb. Nice. As if I don't sculpt very often. See, Tony, you put me out of a job now. What the heck? Wait, you, you, you still got a job. It's just <laughs> less in the sculpting room. <laughs> nice. Here, I'm going to go show him. So Ed sculpted Barb, which is a very popular zombie. But I'm going to show him another giant thing you sculpted. Oh, that yeah. we have in That's over right. here. And or you then, could go show them now, real quick. Yeah, well, I'll show you real quick. Um, for just a little context, I sculpt this in two days. Now I had to do the hands and feet on later. But I, I'll, I'll tell you something interesting about this size. Can you get through here, Adam? Oh, yeah. So this is an Ed sculpture right here. So, Sleeping giant. This thing was so heavy. It was pure clay i mean there was some kind of armature but it was not much because it was just sitting on the floor so i had to sculpt it on the floor and that was where the floor was so it's totally flat there but here's what i found interesting as i went into bigger stuff it takes almost the same amount of time because you still have two eyes one nose one mouth some teeth two ears and so you just, it's just bigger. So it takes a little longer, but not like, well, if this takes, you know, two days, then this would take two years. Now it doesn't work that way. When you, uh, when you're working big, you just. And this was wet clay, of course. This yeah, wasn't well, stone. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was Chave or something. I'd still be working. I'd be over at the old building on, on uh, first uh, sculpting that. But, and then Tom did this beautiful hair work. Tom is much better at poking hair than I. And so, uh, and he, you know, when he wakes up and then. You see his eyes closed there. He wakes up and then um, he talks and his arms wave. And then this gigantic mechanism lifts him up. This, this is a, a really interesting system because the twin arms allow him to go up and lean forward just a little. They could make, if you put them closer, like they're this distance here and then closer here, he leans more. And then this gigantic five inch cylinder is five, what lifts him. Five inch cylinder. Five wow. inch bore, which is crazy, crazy strong. But uh, anyway, pretty, nice. pretty simple system. Very That's exciting. Just, these guys building these for us now, these are really nice. And there's a cover that goes over it that keeps everything nice and neat. But anyway, that's it. That's awesome. All right. Let's see if, I don't know if there's anything. Now, as far as items that Tom sculpted, I don't think there's any items in this room, but of course this, the scare wolf, the, the, the scare wolf, the scare wolf. You, Bound Corpse is one of mine. Oh, Bound, this was an early sculpture of yours. Yeah. Popular. Is, Bound Corpse is, is a Tom yeah. sculpture. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just talking about egos earlier. <laughs> but, oh, yeah. And, of course, uh, Scarewolf is one of mine. Bound Corpse is a, is a Tom sculpture. Scarewolf and the other. I think I sculpted Bound Corpse and I was still not working up in paint all the time and was split between Mondo's area and up here. Oh, no. I, can't even I know. Can you believe now, that? Do you, do you yeah. think this was maybe one of your first sculptures at Distortions? Uh, this was or within the first 20 sculptures I did for Distortions. First 20? 
Oh, yeah, yeah. I, so my very first sculpture for Distortions was before I lived in Colorado. I, um, I did the uh, Zarlock the Destroyer, Monster of the Month, and a, uh, a custom Pterodon... Toppy uh, Hara. Okay, no, I do remember that. Yeah, yeah. And then I kept bothering Ed about uh, a job because I grew up in Colorado and I Kurt, wanted to move back here from California. Kurt says, my, Tom, you're his favorite sculptor. Oh, man, Kurt. Uh, I, I, I so appreciate that. But what about me? What about Ed? Oh. <laughs> well, Kurt. Kurt bought, gave you a steak the other day, Ed, though. Oh, that's good. Oh, there you go. <laughs> There's no egos to Kurt's right. <laughs> so, Bound Corpse was the third corpse that I sculpted for Distortions. I did the uh, the Ancient Mummy. Um, and then one of the first sculptures I did once I started working here full time after moving back to Colorado was Death. Oh yeah, and then so uh, uh, the third corpse I did for distortions, and I and I think that's one out of it. it. That human anatomy is tricky, but I think it started clicking. Yeah, and bound corpse is cool because it's it's a cool compact character and prop. Okay, everybody, I think we're. We're we're heading out. Let's see. Wait, Ed Edmonds and Alan Hops got me started in creating masks and props during 2020. Very creative individuals. And you too, Tom. Oh, thanks. Alan makes some new on me. There's one of Alex's tutorials really saved my bottom of the movie. Oh, really? nice. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Have you ever told it? Oh, I have. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, it is great. Nice. Fear Station is from Alberta, Canada. Wow. Thank you. I've only gotten as far as Niagara Falls. That's do we still make ancient wizards yet? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we we still make ancient wizards. We're just uh, revamping a few a uh, few things, details, and then they'll be available again. They're just unavailable for a short time. Thank you. So have a great weekend, everybody. Yay. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah, thanks for stopping by. Thanks so much. Thanks, Tom and Ed and Lorena. And uh, we're going to be working on some other behind the scenes videos too, and different videos that we'll be we'll be releasing shortly. So anyway, have a great weekend.